Hello, how you doing, fellas? I'm Dorf Zyle, and due to popular demand, we are back in Sorcerer. And according to the poll that I did, it looks like we're going to be entering the woods now. This is this is me, Dorf Zyle. I'm all Irish and stuff. Go into the woods. Your journey is too important to slow down by talking to locals. Sorry. You must pass unseen, and so you disappear into the jungle of, of tall trees. For a short while, the sun was feverous. And then you are between the trees once more, and everything becomes cool and still. You walk for several hours, uneventfully. This is the land that was never settled or explored, and very few travel this way. In places, bushes and shrubs have grown over into the path. Let's... Hmm... Let's hack my way through! Moving carefully forward, you use your sword to cleave the bushes. Your progress is quick, but silent. Then you come to a fork in the road, still steep deep in the forest. Aww. I don't know if I want to go to Bikini Forest. Or if I want to go to Dumpus. Oh, we gotta go to Dumpus, don't we? Well, actually, we have to get to the fork first. Someone has thought to make a sign, perhaps as a guide, or perhaps as a warning. The way to the right is marked Dumpus. The left turn points to Alania. Elena? Eliana. Eliana. Neither way seems the better trod. You'll have to choose. Well,. It looks like this is a dead end. But a dead end could be a quest. Let's go that way. The path winds between trees that get greener and more lush. You must be closer to the river here. Although you cannot hear the water. After about a half hour's walk through dappled shade, you come across a well-built hut. Flowers decorate its walls, and the door has been painted with ornate designs. Penises with Prince Alberts. The path ends here. Scout around the area. You perform a swift cir circuit around the hut, but find nothing unusual or concerning. It seems to be what it is, a hut, set by itself deep in the forest. But for someone to survive out here, on their own, surrounded by the beasts of the jungle, they must be someone quite powerful. Hmm, I shall knock on the door. You approach the door and knock. There is no reply. Open the door. You push open the door and stride inside. <whistles> Bloop! The hut is neatly laid out. You detect the touch of a fastidious woman. Chairs are set around the table, as if for guests. A mattress lies in one corner, and a large kitchen area indicates that whoever lives here, they are fond of cooking. Let's take what I can. There should be food here, then, at least. You head towards the kitchens when you are arrested by a cry. Who's there? Who's that? Uh, I won't locate the speaker. Looking into a corner, hidden by a large cupboard, you see a cage in which a young woman is imprisoned. Good stranger! Let me out of this cage, I beg ya! Uh, what, what, what happened? You move over to the cage, quite shocked. What happened to you? Oh, good stranger! She wails. I've been locked up here for two days! It was elephants that did it! Those mischievous, prankful elephants! Please, you must help me! I have not eaten, and they left me here, where I can see all my cooking things, but cannot reach them. If I let you go, what do I get in return? Stranger! Looking miserable. I am but a poor woman. And I am a poor traveler. <laughs> now tell me, what can you give me for your freedom? The woman looks dreadfully unhappy, but nods. You are on a journey. You will need things to help you. And it's a dangerous wilderness out there. Tell me, in your heart, are you a fighter, or are you a wizard? I am a... I am both. 
The woman nods vigorously. I knew it! I could see it from your face! Well, stranger, in my house, I have Ragnarista's enchanted armband of sword mastery, and I will give it to you if you free me. Hmm. Let's open the cage. You are most generous, you reply with a slight bow. I will release you. Going over to the cage, you try the door. It is locked, of course. Ooh. Break the lock! You draw your sword, placing it the tip against the lock. You attempt to pry it open. The lock is hard and rusted. In your first attempt to force it fails. Succeeding only in permanently damaging the edge of your sword. Shit. Another try will surely weaken it further. The woman looks with you despair. Please try again! Okay. Let's try magic. You should be grateful I waste my strength on you. As I roll up my sleeves. I am apparently a prick, too. Then again, I kind of went down that route, didn't I? Okay! What... can I do here? Z... A... P... Mm, I probably shouldn't cast lightning at a metal object. Z... A... P... Oh wait, I just did that one. <laughs> Uh, how about Z? No. R. A. Z. Sharpen blade. Ooh, I don't have that, though. Uh, D. O. Z. Maybe I have to do that after all. You summon the spell and point it at the lock. The woman must know some magic as she realizes what you are doing. Wait! Don't! You ignore her protestations and fire the lightning bolt. It doesn't smash open the lock, but it does electrify the metal of the cage. <laughs> when the smoke clears, the cage is empty, but for a small smattering of ash. A heavy silence descends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Search the hut. Perfect. Now you can search this place in peace. <laughs> you begin to carefully search the drawers and cupboards of the hut, but you find no sign of any special artifacts or anything truly of value at all. All you find is two gold pieces and a pouch containing soft brown sand. <laughs> Take the lot. You pocket both and turn to go. You leave the hut and its terrible spell of death. You retrace your steps to the last junction, where you turn to take the path to Dumpus. Oh, God. You walk for some... I can't get over it. I knew it was a bad idea, and I did it anyways. <laughs> You walk for several hours, following the twists and turns of the path through the trees. <laughs> then suddenly you stop. You have heard a noise up ahead. Something is moving around between the rocks at the edge of the path. Draw my sword. You draw your sword, and are glad to do so, because a moment later you are attacked in a f flurry of foliage and dirt. A rat bear leaps from the undergrowth. It is much closer than you thought. Sleek black fur allows it to hide in the shadows until it is almost upon you. You bring your sword up to bear and attack! Damn! The rat bear is startled by approach but drops quickly to all fours. You will not be intimidated by an overgrown rodent. You plant your feet and ready a mighty sword swing. At the last moment, the rat bear leaps all claws off the ground and ready to plunge into your body. It takes you by surprise wide open. Afraid of you? It rears back, claws raised. I'm gonna defend. Warily, you move into a defensive crouch. The rat bear sniffs around you. You remain hidden. The rat bear stays low and tries to ram you. Size white! Damn! Uh, this is not good. 
It drops to all fours, its head lowered. Thrust! Yes! You risk an attack, rush it forward, you charge at the rat bear, catching it a light blow. Its fur is thick with blood and scratches, to which you have added a few of your own. It beats the air with its tail. Jab! Do it again! Oh no! Oh, I'm about to die. The rat bear whips out its ferocious tail. Your own attack is forgotten as you try to regain your balance. The rat bear's long teeth are dripping wet. It is salivating. It's 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 drooling over the thought of eating you. It scurries away from you, low in the mud. Oh god. I think we should try this again. Okay. Jab. No, that was not good. Okay. Lunge. Kaka! It squeaks, standing up. And a side swipe. No! A jab. Oh god, I am not doing good at all. There we go! Sideswipe! Oh no! Oh, this is not doing good at all. And I'm dead again. There we go. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna charge. We got that going. We're gonna defend. This is just a puzzle at this point. Cut. Defend. Cut. Yes. Yes, we have got this now. And final blow! Ba -ba -ba! You risk an attack. You charge into the rat bear. Then your sword slips between the creature's ribs and drives deep into its putrid heart. The rat bear squeals and falls to the ground, face down in the mud. Decent, decent Doolin. With the beast dead on the path, you are free to move onwards. No decision is permanent. Click the rewind button at any time if you want to scroll back and try a different path. Oh! Could I... Could I not kill this woman? <laughs> well, it's too late now. It happened. The path winds a few more times around gigantic trees, thousands of years old, and then emerges onto a southern plain as if the forest had been scooped away by a gigantic hand. A river trickles thinly between short grasses, and by its banks stands a tiny village of Dumpus. Avoid the village. We're going to go into the village, because I kind of need rest and rations and all that good stuff. Today has been a short day with a few tr true dangers. With a decent meal and a night's sleep, your next day will start auspiciously. So to you begin the gentle climb down into the village. You follow the path down into the village, pass on a sign which declares it to be Dumpus. The streets are thin and narrow, and the buildings have been set close together, as if trying to withstand a storm. There is a terrible smell hanging in the air. All in all, it seems an unpleasant place. Lovely. We are going to talk to the villagers. You pass along the main path through the village, and pause outside a hut in which several of the disheveled hill dwellers are sitting and eating. They seem deep in discussion about something. Several are shaking their fists in the air. Lifting back the canvas flap, you step inside. The hill dwellers stop talking immediately and look at, up at you. One gets to his feet and gestures you forward. Bow my head. You nod your head once to the man who returns the gesture. 
Then one of the others calls something in their native tongue and points at your side, to where your sword hangs out below the helm of your cloak. In broken common tongue, the first man croaks, No weapons! And he indicates a table by the door where you can leave the blade. Look over the table. There are plenty of other weapons there, so the men appear honest enough. Remove my sword. You want to fasten your sword belt and leave your weapon on the table. The hill dwellers nod to show their appreciation and then beckon you to sit with them. Then they continue the conversation just as a animatedly as before. Speaking in a local tongue that you cannot follow. But as they talk, they pour you a drink and provide you with food. They seem quite welcoming. Listen to the talk. As you eat, you listen, catching a few words here and there. Goblins. Arms. Cristanti. They seem to be very concerned. Tell them you've been there. I've been to Cristanti. The men nod, but do not seem surprised. Slowly you piece together the story. The group seem quite sure that a horde of goblins are planning an attack on Cristanti, which is apparently one of the wealthiest spots in the hills. They're discussing whether or not it would be worth helping the village to defend itself, which might mean they are offered some kind of reward. You must help. They, I, I, I have to make up for the fact that I just electrocuted a woman and turned her to ash. It was an accident, even though I kind of knew that was going to happen, because electricity and metal cage. Yeah. You must help! Gustani, it does not help us, one of the men points out. They are rich. We are poor. Well, you can be better than them. The men nod, swayed by your ruthless logic. And you? How do you fight? I serve the king of Analand. The men shrug. Then you serve a shadow. The sun, it is going down. The evening draws to a close. The men thank you for your counsel and leave one by one. Explore the town a bit further. <laughs> Halfway along the track, you come across a couple of merchant's huts. You browse for items worth buying with your 18 gold pieces. Your attention is taken by a finely woven skull cap, a finely crafted sword, and a small bag of provisions. We need... Provisions. You examine the bag. It is, there is enough to last three days. Six gold pieces. Yes. Examine the sword. Carefully, you lift the long sword from the table. And swing it through the air. It cuts with a finely carved edge. A fine piece of work, I'm sure you'll agree. Put it back. Examine the skull cap. You pick up the skull cap and turn it over. Stolen from the priest of Daddy Ule. The merchant declares with pride, A fine piece of work. Four gold pieces. You can tell from the feel of it the cloth has no inherent magic. But it might be useful in spells. Let's try... Let's pay. Let's do it. You pay him four gold pieces and place the skull cap in your sack. You nod the merchant. The merchant smiles. Or anything else I can help you with? Any work to be had here, my friend. I need to earn some more cash. The merchant sizes you up. You look like a good worker to me. One of my friends needs some digging done. I'm sure he would pay you and feed you for it. Mm, digging, digging what? The merchant shifts uncomfortably. Does it matter? You'll find out, he stares at you. So? He looks over his shoulder at his path. At the path. I'm gonna go that way now myself. You coming? Let's follow the merchant. He leads you to a house on the edge of the village and introduces you to a householder, a stout man who is probably incapable of lifting a spade, let alone digging with it. What is it you need doing? I'm going to ask him. Sesper! Out back! Needs digging! Oh, good. How much? Well, it's pretty urgent. The old one's overflowing. How much money? Three gold pieces. Okie dokes. I can do that for three gold pieces. Spades out back. He replies with a jerk of his thumb. 
You walk through the man's house into the back garden. The smell is shitty. A really shitty smell. The job is not just to dig a new cesspit, but to dig over the old one. And it's going to be several hours work that will probably take the whole night. You collect the spade, which is stuck in the ground by the hole. Cast a spell. Ooh. I might. C A Okay. B I G I'm gonna grow in size. Okay. What about P E P Hmm D I G unknown Do I dare try? If I grow big that should make it an easier job because I can have increased strength. Mm. Okay. You cast the spell and wait for it to take effect. Then you feel the spade turn from a heavy tool to a mere toothpick in your hand, as you swell to three times your usual size. You have the digging work done in barely any time. Yay! So it worked, okay. I was worried about trying to use dig, because uh, it's an unknown spell, and the last time we did an unknown spell, you know. You go back into the house and collect your money. Three gold pieces. The grateful householder also provides you with some food. As well as a space on the floor to rest for the remainder of the night. You settle down happily and are quickly asleep. You dream strange dreams as you sleep. Your thoughts are dominated by the strange woman in a hut. In your mind's eye, she comes at you, stabbing with a carpenter's knife, desperate to carve your bones into furniture for her hovel. Overheard, you f overheard, overhead, you fancy you hear the flap of giant wings. The birdmen come from the crown! Perhaps before this journey is finished, they will come for you. Alright, well. You rise early, dismiss the attentions of the householder, and head out onto the street. Within a few minutes of walking, you are out of Dumpus and back onto the road. After another hour or so, the way branches, with one path heading up into the hills, and the other turning downhill and along one side of a barren stony ridge. Is that a village you can make out at the top of the hill? It seems a lonely place for it. And that is where I will leave us for now. Do we go uphill, or do we go downhill? The choice, of course, is yours. And until next time, everyone, I've been Darth Zao, and you've been a fantastic audience, and I'll see you in the future!